there, welcome to Subpar Stitches. My name is Hillary and this is my floss tube channel. I don't know why I feel like I need to apologize for the background, but my couch is covered in yarn cakes because I got a yarn caking tool and decided I needed to cake up a bunch of yarn that I was about to use. And I don't wanna move it all off the couch, Fil set up my film and then put it all back on the couch when I'm done. So I was just filming for my other channel, which is a nail polish themed channel. Uh, this is all nail polish <laughs> behind me. Um, we're just gonna keep sitting here because it's just so much easier than moving everything. I film my nail videos and my cross stitch videos in the same day. So I have to like shift, I film my nail videos first and then I shift everything over because my couch is over there and then I have to like redo all the lighting and stuff. It's just such a hassle. Um, not that anybody cares, like it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're just gonna sit right here. So it's been two weeks since my last update and on my previous update, I had just come off of basically Christmas break because my company closes down for Christmas and New Year's. So I had like unlimited stitching time and I thought, man, going back to work is gonna really put a damper on my stitching time. I'm not going to have so much to show them, blah, blah, blah. And then it turned out um, I did pretty well. <laughs> I set some semi-decent, maybe kind of big-ish goals for January, at least like for me. And I feel like I've been really on track with them. And I thought, again, because I was so focused on these couple of like larger pieces, I wasn't gonna have much to show you guys outside of those. But again, I surprised myself. So we'll follow my normal format. I do put timestamps down below. So if there's anything you don't care about, you can totally skip that. I also link uh, to the best of my ability, every single pattern I talk about down below and I do them in the order that I spoke about them in the video. So they go, they follow the order, like the chronological order in the video. So let's go over. I'm going to do my FOs. We'll go into whips and then we'll talk about some plans and then maybe I'll throw in some additional like life stuff at the end. So starting right off with FOs or finished objects, I didn't have any fully finished objects, um, but that's not a big deal because I like kind of go on like finishing sprees where it's like, I like to build up some stuff and then I like to fully finish a lot in one sitting if I can, just, I don't know why, it just feels better that way. Uh, so I finished a few things that I will deal with later. Um, so the first one was from my New Year's Eve 12 by 12, and it was incidentally the first one that I started in my 12 by 12, and this is called, I believe it's like Woodland, what is it? It's Woodland Holiday, and this is what it looked like the last time you guys saw it. So this was from the Just Cross Stitch Christmas 2023, like special edition ornaments magazine. It is by a designer called Spot Colors. And I stitched this on 18 count white Ada by DMC. If you see me looking off screen, I'm just looking at my notion for all my notes because that's where I keep any notes on a project. I'm using the called for DMCs in this pattern and here is my finish. So it's just a really itty bitty ornament. I will finish it. I, all of the 12 by 12s that I did, they are gonna be ornaments. So I'm gonna wait until I get kind of a big pile of ornaments going and then I will have like an ornament FFO day because my goal is thanks to Chris Cross Stitch's influence, I really want a cross stitch Christmas tree, like just all cross stitch ornaments. And I finished like 10 or so last year. And now I'm just kind of bringing them more into the new year. So you'll probably see ornaments scattered throughout the year in with bigger projects. But this was a really quick stitch. It's really itty bitty. The only thing that I really hate about like little projects like this is when they have any kind of like, see this like little singular spots here where it's like kind of like little mini confetti stitches because I guess I could do a pin stitch, but I just don't want to. And when you're using white or like thinner cloth, you have to be careful that when you carry or if you choose to carry, it doesn't become visible in the back. I feel like 
I did it like the motifs are close enough on this where I could carry very easily so not a big deal but I'll probably just do you know a simple little round ornament finish I love 18 count fabric I think it looks so cute I should <laughs> stitch more on like 32 and 16 count because sometimes with 18 count especially with two strands it does look a little bit puffy a little bit bunchy but I am one of those people who kind of likes that look I think it's very cutesy I I don't know I just love this design I keep thinking I don't know why but I look at this and I'm sure this is just a tree branch but I'm like that looks like rhubarb I, I just keep thinking it's rhubarb and then it makes me want rhubarb pie so so that was my first finish of 2024 and it was the first piece that I started in my 12 by 12 so it was kind of fitting the second thing I finished was actually one of my goals to finish for January and this is called be nicer and it is by cross stitch garden on Etsy I'm showing it to you on the screen where I was last time I'm using a or I used a 28 count white even weave which I'm gonna tell you right now that was a mistake I didn't like do the math on how big this was gonna end up on a 28 count and it ended up much larger than I had anticipated originally I thought I was going to put this in a hoop and finish it that way now I'm thinking maybe a pillow but I use the called for DMC and here is the finished product it's called or it's called be nicer and it says be nicer to yourself you dumb bitch and it has these like fancy little florals around it I'm not gonna lie to you this was kind of boring to stitch I didn't enjoy stitching this I really love the look of needlework and like like cross stitch that it's like this kind of a classic or floral or like very like gentle looking borders and it has just some kind of like crass or obnoxious saying I think it looks fun I don't enjoy stitching it I'm just not a big like phrase stitcher some people really like stitching words and for me if the words are like the biggest part of the stitch I just don't enjoy it um but I do like the finished piece here so what I think I'm gonna do is find an equally fun oops I dropped it like a very like gentle pinks and greens fabric and I'm gonna probably make some small pillows first in order to practice because I've never made a pillow before uh, and then once I feel confident I will turn this into kind of a decently sized pillow because this is as big as my stupid head and I'll put it on my little couch that I like to film on I think the colors look cute together I feel like the the text in the middle I wish that I hadn't used DMC but I started this before I knew about um, the sulky thread game and the coverage that that has so next time if I ever do a piece like this again I will be using sulky thread because I can I don't think you can tell on camera but up here I can see a lot of that white peeking through not the end of the world I mean that's just the nature of cross stitch it's an X like there's blank space in an X um but yeah I I think that this is really funny and I posted this on my Instagram and it got the most likes on my on my subpar stitches Instagram that any of my posts have ever gotten so I feel like this resonated with a lot of people and I showed this to Rob my fiance and he goes oh that's a good message for you and he was like completely serious and I was like I know because I, I feel like we're all this way but nobody's like I'm my own worst critic I'm very hard on myself I am very mean to myself and so I just I love the sentiment oh also I hate the fabric um this even weave it's probably like Charles Craft or DMC or something I I got it at a craft store before I was like wanting to bite the bullet and buy like a nicer even weave online because those are like 20 to 30 bucks for a fat quarter typically like they're, they're not super cheap you know and I didn't know if I was gonna like it so I bought this and it was annoying to stitch on it's just it was like very stiff in a way that I don't like and in a way that just a hoop doesn't accommodate very well so didn't love it I've since bought more and have used it and still don't love it so I need to stop buying it um, but yeah cute and then my last fo was another one from my 12 by 12 this is another one from the just cross stitch Christmas 2023 ornaments 
and it is called Welcome by Always Time to Stitch. Here is where I was before. This is stitched on 14 count Mill Hill perforated paper. Um, and I obviously it's finished now. So the way this one works is here's the door that is on the perforated paper and I've cut it out and I've done all the back stitch and then you stitch a little wreath separately and cut that out and then you'll assemble them. And it's just, I don't know like why I thought that was so cute, but I really, I am not someone who loves patterns that rely heavily on back stitch for the details, but for some reason, like the way the back stitch looks on the window panes, I really loved. And this like letterbox here, I did make a mistake and I miscounted and I made the the door like one stitch too wide. So there should only be one stitch between the door handle and the border of the door, this white border. There's two and I just feel like it looks fine. I, I feel like if you didn't know that, if I hadn't told you, then you wouldn't have noticed. And then the wreath, they tell you to like use double-sided tape to like stick it on there. I feel like that is like sacrilege. <laughs> I might try to figure out how to use some magnets to make that work and like tuck them behind like the felt or something like that. And I, I've only done beading one other time. I had a little beaded Mill Hill kit and I really enjoyed it. And so I was excited to put the beads on this wreath. Um, so here's the deal with the beads. <laughs> I wasn't about to just order four different sets of beads for these colors because I was just like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I just feel like I don't need to order all those beads. I just didn't want to. And so then I was like, well, the Mill Hill kits all come with like way more than you need when it comes to the beads, because I, I knew that because I had the one that I'd already done and I had a lot left over. And so I took a lot of my Santas that I had and I was like, let me just, let me just embezzle some beads from these other kits. And then I was like laughing the entire time because I was like, haha, in beadsling, I'm in beadsling from the other kits. And I thought it was really funny. And it's not funny. It's the dumbest thing that anybody's ever said. And yet still here I am telling you about it. So I didn't have the exact colors. I had a red, a gold, and then I think it called for like red, gold, or red, yellow, blue, and I think purple. And so there was a red, a gold, which I was like, that's better than yellow. And then this tealy green one, which I think you can barely see the tealy green ones. Oh no, you can kind of see them. And then <laughs> in one of the kits, it had these weird like frosted purple ones that are like way bigger than the other beads. But I was like, that's fine. And then I just used the dark green in order to stitch them on there. And I just kind of loosely followed what they said to do. Cause it's like, it, it's not, it doesn't have to be like exact. And yeah, I don't know. I really love this like two piece kind of cross stitch thing. Like Liz Matthews has a pattern where it's like stitched on two separate colored fabrics and then you kind of like stick them together. And I just love stuff like that where it's like, it's really not that crazy, but it's just kind of, it's a little bit out of the box. And I gotta tell you, cutting this out, cutting that center piece out, that was stressful. That was annoying. Cause I don't know. It just, I, I always screw up cutting out on like the canvas and the perforated paper. I just always, always, there's one stitch where I accidentally cut a little too close to, but I, I managed to not this time. So that's another one that will uh, get fully finished when I do my big ornament FFO. So that is everything I finished. So now let's get into my whips and I have five to show you. And the first one I have is my Lord Libidon Pokemon cross stitch. This is like the epic Gen 1 cross stitch. And I've been working about, this is my oldest whip. It's from January 1st of 2023. So it's really not that old in the grand scheme of things. Although I wish I was further in it. So here's where I was previously. I have started dedicating more time to this. And one of my goals for January was to add 3000 stitches into this in the month of January. And I'm just trying to set like monthly chunk goals so that I can, you know, keep getting some progress so that next year I can finish it. 
This is stitched on 18 count white Ada that I bought from some seller on Amazon and I would never buy from them again because it arrived sealed yet it was filthy. And I have added as of today, which is January 19th, 3007 stitches. So you saw where I was and I mean, you saw this on the thumbnail. So uh, here's where I am. Some of it is kind of rolled up, oops, like up here, like this is where it ends. But I put in where I, so I worked a lot over here and I finished um, the first row of pages across. So there's like four full pages and then like a small page. So technically it's like five pages. So I have five full pages totally done on this, which I'm happy about. And then I kind of worked down a little bit. I threw some of this in. And then today I came back over to back over to here. I don't know where I'm at. I came back over to here and I started working on this page. Like I'm not exclusively working on one page, but basically what I'm doing is it's like, I'm picking a color and I'm exhausting it over in this area. And then I check over here to see if there's anywhere else that color is needed. And if so, I'll add it. And then once I have done all the reachable stitches in that color, I come back over, pick the next color and do it all again. And it, that way it just kind of like fills out kind of sporadically because the problem is the previous largest cross stitch I did was like 60,000 stitches or whatever. It was my big X-Files I Want to Believe poster. And I page completed that. So I did one page at a time and you can see if you're, if you're looking right at it, you can kind of see where the pages start and end. And I don't like that. So I was like, let me be a little bit less like rigid with this. And I'm just so excited, but this is like, I think it's like 25 pages. So I'm like, yeah, it would have to be because I'm about 20% done according to Pattern Keeper. So um, I've got 20 more pages to go. <laughs> um, but yeah. I feel like I, I'm not gonna put this away for the month just because I reached my goal. I'm gonna continue to stitch on it, you know, a little bit more before the month ends. And then next month I'll know that I can set my goal just a little bit higher and keep on pushing through. So I, I'm i really excited to get this done and to see way more progress in this. Cause what happened was I was monogamous on this for like the first half of last year. And then I kind of, discovered floss tube in a way that I previously hadn't before and I just kind of put it away and then I worked on anything but this so it really didn't get that much work last year and so now this year I want to make this a priority. The next project I have to show you is my long dog sampler Pavane for these times and this is the cover photo here and here's where I was before so I wasn't quite finished with the second page at that point. And this is stitched on 28 count Springfield Sage Lugana. I got it from 123 Stitch. It's just like a plain kind of greeny gray. And this is what I've been working on on my lunch whenever I'm in the office. So like I said, I was only, I think I was like just about to finish with page two which I have since finished and worked into page three. Here it is a little bit closer. And my goal is to be halfway done with page three by the end of this month, which I think is doable. I just have to fill in this big like motif here. And then there's the start of a flower pot, which I will get into once I finish with that motif and then bringing the border down. One thing I find really interesting about stitching on this because it uses a lot of negative space in the motifs, especially like up here, you can see like all those flowers are created by negative space stitching is so like when I'm stitching on it and I'm like, okay, all right, I've got all these stitches. I feel like I am done and I look at it and I'm like, I feel like I didn't get anything done. And it's because I've been looking at it for so long. It's like my eyes kind of are like not seeing it. And then the next time I pull it out, like the next day at lunch, I go, oh, wow, I made a lot of progress. Like it looks so different. And I also really like how, so it's like mirrored, but it's not. So every single one of these 
is, you know, in this like half, what is that, an octagon? Yeah, this half octagon, but they're not the same across. And then here is like a big flower pot and there will be a flower pot here to mirror it, but it'll be slightly different. So I, I like that it's the same, but different. I really enjoy this. I like long dog samplers, but um, I spent some time on their website last night actually, because I was like, I kind of want to start another big monochromatic piece, but in something that's not black. Like I want to get a, a really nice silk from Silks For You like a fun color and do something like that. It's just like the long dog sample, the, there's not many that call to me to stitch personally. Like I like them and I'm like, those are nice, but I don't want to stitch them myself, if that makes sense, you know, where it's like, I appreciate them, but they're not for me. So if anybody has any suggestions for other monochromatic pattern makers, I was looking at long dog, I looked a little bit at Modern Folk Embroidery, and then I also was looking at, oh gosh, who is it? Ink Circles. Ink Circles seem to have quite a good selection of monochromatics as well. But if you guys have any other suggestions, let me know, because I'm in the market for an additional large monochromatic pattern, because I need another one. Um, but yeah, like I'm gonna get half of this done, there's quite a lot of like open space here between this and the next flower pot. So I think it's doable. Like th these flowers that are here don't seem nearly as dense as the ones that are on this side. So I think that I can definitely bang it out in my next few lunch hours that I have. And if I don't finish it by my last lunch in office, then I will just work on it at home until the end of the month. The next project I worked on was one of my Mill Hill Santas. And I think I told you guys, but I'm like interested in collecting and stitching literally all of them. They release three a year, each in a different theme. So this one is from the 1999 series. These are the Northwoods Santas, and this is the Pine Tree Santa. Here's what it will look like when it's finished. The paper is a little bit glossy, so it's hard to show him off. Um, here's where I was the last time. And this is just all stitched with the kit paper. It's all on perforated paper. They provide you with the DMC, although it is not pre-sorted. And that's kind of a hassle, but I own every DMC color. So I just pulled the ones from the bobbins and tried to like match them up so that I knew which one was which, because some of the greens are a little bit close. Um, and then they give you all the beads and a needle and the beading needle. And so here is where I am now. So I know I added just a handful of other colors and then I got to the point where I was able to put in some of the tree here. And what I'm really excited about with these Santas is they all have really fun facial hair. Like the the beards are tied on in like a fun way that just it adds a lot of dimension and the beads really make them fun one of them i don't think it's this one i think it's the other one i have has a little bell for the santa so i don't know they're just really fun yeah it's not this one but i just i enjoy i enjoy the beading process and mill hills are like perfect for that the one thing i really don't like about mill hills though is it's stitched three strands so you can't loop start which i love a loop start so that makes it hard but i have this one i have another one from the 1999 series i have the uh juniper santa no i that's the one i don't have i have the holly berry santa and then I bought one from a later year series because it's my favorite one out of all of them. It's the Christmas morning Santa where he just looks a little bit frazzled waking up on Christmas morning. He's got a donut. So I'm just slowly picking those up and adding them to my collection and I'll just continue to stitch them. Okay, my next whip is gonna be a little bit awkward to show you because it's, it's on scroll rods, but it's not on the frame because I had to steal the frame to put my Pokemon one in because I stripped the dang screws on the one that my Pokemon one was in and I need to go and buy some more screws from like a hardware store. So I'm just kind of swapping the scroll rods back and forth. So this is the Meditation Garden by Jan Hicks. And here's where I was last time. This is one that I want to enter into the state fair. 
and I am stitching this on 30, what is it, 30, 36 count stone linen by Fiber on a Whim. And I'm stitching this with the Miss Satis silks. And they're so nice to stitch with. And I'm, my goal is to finish one full page by the end of the month, which I'm pretty close. I've extended a little bit down. So like, uh, I've gone into page two just a little bit and I've added the darker green tree. I have to finish that up and then there's just a little bit more. So this is actually what I'm going to work on tonight once I am done with this video. I was attracted to this pattern because the border is phenomenal. It's a bunch of just very colorful, vibrant, different kind of patterns and I really like a varied border. I'm not someone who gets like insanely annoyed with borders or like stitching a border, but there's just something so attractive. Like next I'm going to stitch, there's some like chain link type thing going on up here. And I am just so excited as I stitch more motifs. It's really, really nice. I was off by like half a stitch somewhere and it kind of threw me off, but I think I'm back on track now. I think I've kind of gotten it under control. Um, but yeah, I will, you can see I've got the color ready to go. I will finish this tree tonight and maybe move on to another motif. And this will be kind of like my weekend work. I have this on a like lap, it's like a lap stand type frame. And that has been a game changer. Rob walked into the room and he's like, how come every time I come into the room, you have some new weird craft gadget? And I'm like, buddy, you don't understand. I find that with this linen, it works really well. First, I tried to use it with the Pokemon one, but something about that Ada, it just makes, it's not easy to find where I need to put the needle blind. Cause like there's some projects where I just, I gotta flip them over and look at the back to put the needle in. People will say that's not correct. People will say it takes longer. I don't care. I, the stitches on the back of the Pokemon one are so dense. This is the back. Like I have chosen to start traveling quite a bit. And this is like thick, like a tapestry because this is two over one on 18 count. So it's, it's quite thick. You can kind of see how like thick that has become. So it makes it hard when I'm like trying to like, without looking at the back, like put the needle through, I can't see where I'm sticking it. But with that linen, it's, it's fine on the lap stand. So I really like that. And once I'm done with this Jan Hicks pattern, I think I'm going to get colors of Mexico. I think it's called like her colors, the, like, I don't know. It's just something about the designs she chooses to, to make and like the colors she chooses. I, she's just got an eye for stuff that I really like. I like bright and pizzazzy and fun. And that's the thing, like a lot of samplers are just very prim and I like them from like a, like looking at them perspective. I'm like, that's really pretty. But the colors are just too dull for me a lot of the times. And I know I could do a conversion, but maybe I just, I just don't, I don't know. That's not always the vibe, but uh, like, Jan Hicks's stuff is beautiful. And I don't usually want to stitch stuff that's not like goofy or weird. I, I prefer like, I stitch a lot of like Mothman and creepy stuff and like just weirdo stuff. That's what I like to stitch. But some designers, they just suck me in. So that's why I really like the Jan Hicks stuff. Her colors really get me. So, and then my last stitch. So this is my year in stitches. This is like a daily project that I've started this year and I'm caught up through yesterday. So I've got everything done through yesterday. I, I don't have like the top border done yet, um, but I think I have a picture from last time. But if not, I think I only had the first two motifs. So I'll go through everything with you. Um, I did kind of vaguely start putting in the Y because it's going to say a year in stitches across the top. But here are the first, what is today, the 19th? So it's the first 18 days of 2024 so far. So every single day I choose an event or a thing or whatever, or just something to kind of represent the day that I had. So yeah, I think I did days one and two. So day three 
is an engagement ring. This is a modified uh, pattern by Makoto Ozu. And I like, I just put these in Stitch Fiddle and I play with them. So this is because I announced my engagement on stream. Like I said, I do have a, I, I don't, it's not a second channel because that was my first channel. This is my second channel. Um, but I am mediocre manis. I am a nail polish, like super micro influencer, I guess you could call me. And so I did a stream and I ended up announcing my engagement. And that was like the first big announcement that I had done at that point. And so I just wanted to, honestly, I just really want to stitch this ring. <laughs> and then uh, the next day I went to a Tatris class in Dearborn, which is, I think it's got like the highest, hang on, let me look this up before I tell you something wrong. Okay, yeah. So Dearborn has the largest proportion of Arab Americans in the entire US. And so they had a, at the, I think it was like the Arab American Museum, like in one of the smaller rooms, they were doing a Tatrice class and it was like $30 and the money counted as like a donation towards a Palestinian organization. And they talked a little bit about like the history of Tatrice and what it means to Palestinian women and some of the, um, some of the motifs and their significance. And they gave us like a little sheet of paper that had a bunch of the motifs and they taught people how to stitch and like obviously I already knew how to stitch so I just kind of started stitching a motif. I was really there because I wanted to learn about more of like the historical aspect of it and like meet some people and I sat at a cool table with like um, the woman who sat directly to my right. She used to work at the DIA which is the Detroit Institute of Art and she was like a chemist there which was really interesting and then there was a woman who she was like a self-taught embroidery artist and her stuff was crazy it was really cool but i chose one of the motifs from the paper they gave us and then i changed the colors to match the palestinian flag because they talked about how one of the big things about Tatris is it's very personal to whoever's stitching it and it's almost like supposed to tell a story and you can like modify things. So I chose to modify it in that way. Um, let's see the next day. This is a soju bottle right here. This one I drafted up myself and it says uh, Jinro in Korean and I couldn't really make the Jinro frog so I just kind of made a little blue circle. Um, my sister and her fiance and then my fiance and me, we all went to this Korean, um, what is it called? Chimuk? Like a Chimuk restaurant. I, Rob tells me my accent is really bad. So uh, my Korean's not the best. I, I try, but um, it's like a, where you, or is it Somuk? Somuk? I can't remember. Where you eat you basically you eat food and you drink and so we went to a place like that and we got some Jinro uh, chamiso and it was really good and then the next day I got my haircut which I hate getting haircuts because I just run out of things to say I don't want to talk to somebody for that long I don't know um, but yeah I just got a trim and this is from one of the Makoto Ozu books the next day, Rob and I watched a whole bunch of the X-Files. So I drafted up this little X-Files poster. Uh, this is my Peloton shoe because I finally did my first workout of the year. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days into the year, I got on the Peloton. Uh, and this is a modified Ozu. This is a book. This is Pretty Girls. I finished the book that day. And so I decided to stitch the book cover and this is self-drafted. The book was mid. Uh, don't really recommend it. Like, it's was, it was fine. It was pretty gross in some parts. And, like, I'm not somebody who's easily grossed out. But I definitely think that if you are, you would not like this book. <laughs> um, the next one here is a stick of butter that I drafted myself. And this is because at my work, there's just, like, a, like a little... But what do you call it? Like a pat of butter that's just been in the fridge for like half a year and it just sits in the dead center on one of the shelves. And I'm just like, whose butter is this? And I opened up the fridge and I was just like, how is this still here? And then all day all I could think about was that butter. So that's why I chose that one. And then this one, 
it's going to be kind of hard to see. I stitched it in a twill. It's a snowflake. This is an Ozu pattern. And that's because it finally snowed here in Michigan, like to a like sticking extent. It hasn't stopped. It's been snowing like crazy. Um, but yeah, so I decided to commemorate that. Uh, this is an alarm clock. And I took, I looked at some Ozu patterns, but then I just kind of like drafted this one myself. This, it says 930 on it. I don't know if you can see. Um, I overslept and was late for work, which I never, ever oversleep. I like turned my alarm off or something. I don't know. But so yeah, that was, that was a Friday and I was like, oh my God, oopsie. And then I just was like, hey, personal matter. I'll be in soon. <laughs> personal matter being that I overslept. Um, this is a pair of flip flops because we went to go pick up Rob's car because he had gotten an oil change and he being the genius that he is wore flip-flops and shorts because that's all he ever wears and it was snowing it was like crazy he had to dig his car out while wearing flip-flops and shorts and i naturally sat in my car and watched him i did not help him at all because that was your decision buddy uh so yeah i put the flip-flops there because i thought it was funny um this i think Rob was like, why do you have a boxing glove on there? I was like, it's a mitten. And that's just because it was freezing that day. I think it was like below zero that day. And it was just like, we were bundled up so, so cold. And then this was, I think, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We went to Kora Sushi and we got some sushi because any day that we both have off, which is really rare like but if we both have like a holiday off his company does not give him many holidays off um a lot of times we just go to somehow this has become the tradition we go to Kora Sushi which it's not good like it's bad it's like so at least the one near us is like really bad but we always go and spend like a hundred dollars I don't know it's fun. I miss going to, when I used to live in Japan, I used to love going to Kaiten Sushi. So yeah, I, I got these from, oh, I forgot to tell you. So this is an Ozu pattern that I changed the colors. This is from, um, it's called like cute kawaii cross stitch. And I just took the face off of it and I changed the colors. These are from Makoto Ozu and I think I left them the same. Okay. And now we're on this day. So this is a toilet that I, I found some pixel art online and I kind of played with the colors. Um, so basically what happened was Rob's toilet seat has been broken for like two months. So we, we have two bathrooms. We live in a three bedroom, two bath. People get mad about that. They're like, why do two people need three bedrooms? Cause we need two offices and then we need a bedroom. Like I don't, we both work from home occasionally. Like we both need an office. I don't know why that makes people so mad because you know what, when a couple buys a house that has like a 10 million bedrooms, nobody bats an eye. But if you rent an apartment that has three bedrooms, people are mad at you. And I don't know why, like, is this just something that only happens to me? Because people always get worked up and they're like, why do you need three bedrooms? Because I do, like, I want the space. I can afford it. It's actually surprisingly cheap. Like, I don't know why this apartment is so cheap because it's very nice. Um, anyways, so three bedroom, two baths. So we each have our own bathroom, basically. And Rob broke his toilet seat, I don't know, and he won't call maintenance to fix it. So that's been broken. And then my toilet, I hit the flusher and it just like, I heard a crack and it didn't flush. And I pulled the, the top of the tank off and the lever had just snapped. So you can't even flush my toilet anymore. Um, so both of our toilets are messed up. And so I put the toilet there because that's just what I want. And then this is a tire that I found like a pixel art online and I kind of modified it. And that's because I got a flat tire. And so Rob had to take me to work that day. And that was annoying because I feel like I'm always running over nails around here. I don't know why. And then the last one, this is for yesterday. That is a COVID thingy. It's, it, it's one COVID. And that's because my manager got COVID and then they sent home like half the office because they were in close contact with it. My office only has like 10 people in it. So literally all of the office pretty much had to go home except for my department because they were like, oh, you guys aren't in contact with him. But I like was, I was close enough to him. I wanted to go home too. Um, but yeah, so those are 
the first 18 days. And so for today, th this is 18 across, and then the next one will go right over here. And yeah, so far it's been really fun. It's like a stitch diary. I, I feel like it's forcing me to kind of sit down and think like more about my day and like maybe put some highlights in that I previously would have just ignored, you know, like, I don't know. I'm really enjoying this process and, and playing around with making my own like little designs, which I never thought I would ever design anything, but so far I've designed like three or four of these. And I mean, I know they're not that big, but still it's just, it's a step in the right direction. And so now I just really need to focus on getting the title in. Um, not that I don't have all year to do it, but I don't want to put it off and then be like blindsided. Uh, yeah. So this fabric is like easy grid. And at first I didn't really get it. I was like, why do people use this? There was like a slight learning curve and now I'm fine. And I, I like it. I think the easy grid is nice and I see why people use this for full coverage. So those were all of my whips. And I guess now let's just move into plans. So I had set four goals for January and I've achieved two of them, which were add 3000 stitches to Pokemon and finish my Be Nicer stitch. So now I just need to finish at least half of the third page of Pavane for These Times, which I'm working on. And I need to finish page one of Meditation Garden. And I'm gonna work on that tonight after I finish filming this. And then I'll probably do some on Saturday, which is when you guys will be seeing this. Um, it's kind of like a more of a weekendy stitch for me because I wanna sit down and just put in a lot of time. And those two goals I will be focused on. And then uh, the next piece that I want to add to my rotation now that I've finished uh, Be Nicer is I want to work on my Snowman Collector, The Clown, and put some work into that because I started that last year and then I just, I really don't like the fabric that much or I didn't when I started it, but I was also a brand new linen stitcher. So I think now going back to it, I will have a much easier time because I'm more accustomed to stitching on linens and even weaves and like stitching over two and blah, blah, blah. Whereas before I had only stitched on Ada and so I was really struggling. So that's gonna be the next like kind of focus bonus piece. I guess I have like my focus big pieces which are Pokemon, Pavane and Meditation Garden. And then I kind of have like a focus extra where it's like a slightly smaller but something I still want to finish piece that I'm going to work on each month. So that one is going to be my focus for February but I might as well start it a little bit early since I've finished you know be nicer. Um, so yeah those are my plans and then obviously continue to do my stitch a day every single day. I don't know what I'm gonna it's already 6 p.m. and I still I haven't really done much today to be, you know what? I watched a really, really sad movie. So maybe that's what I'll use as my, uh, my little stitch. Um, but yeah, so I don't really have to go into life stuff because now that I have this, it just kind of covers all the life stuff and you guys know everything about me. Um, so just real quick, just books and shows and media and whatnot. Like I said, I did read, um, Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter, which I know that's like kind of like a more, po I think it's popular. I don't know. I don't know what's really popular in the book world outside of like Sarah J. Moss or Mass or however you say it. And then also um, Colleen Hoover, who another author, I just, I, I don't like her stuff. Um, if you do, that's great. I'm glad that you enjoy it, but I just, I couldn't get into it. Um, but yeah, the book, it started out really promising and I was like, oh, this could be interesting. And then it took like like a weird, it had a weird twist where I was just like, why? Like, why did you do it like this? Uh, but for a while I was really hooked and then I was just kind of like, okay, whatever, let me just finish it. And then there was this one part that was just really gross. Um, I'll tell you guys, the spoiler if you're gonna read it, but it's, it's really not significant to the plot, but like the guy's like torturing a woman and he pees into a spray bottle and sprays her in the face with it. I was like, excuse you, that's disgusting. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that's what I was reading. And now I'm reading Pride and Prejudice because I watched the movie again and I was just like, I wanna, I wanna read the book again. So I'm reading that. Um, it's the same as it ever was, it's good, I love it. And then Rob and I started watching, what is the show? True Detective, which 
Oh my God, my lighting is just a disaster. I'm so bad at lighting, you guys. Yeah, but Rob and I started watching True Detective, which is really good. We're watching season one. It's got Woody Harrelson and some other guy whose name I forgot. Um, is it Matthew McConaughey? Yeah, it's Matthew McConaughey. And like, it's like these two detectives who come in decade, like a decade after this crime got solved and they're like retelling the story in an interview. And so you keep seeing them flashbacks and like in the flashbacks, Woody Harrelson is definitely wearing a wig and it freaks me out because I don't like him with hair. Like if I've seen someone for the first time and they're bald, seeing them with hair, like I'm like a baby. I'm like, this is upsetting to me. Like, it's just, I can't handle it. Like my best friend, he's bald. He like shaves his head. Um, and he shows, he showed me a few times, like pictures of him when he was younger, when he had a full head of hair. And I was like, ew, like, stop. I don't want to look at this. Like, it's weird. So seeing Woody Harrelson with hair messes me up. And then Matthew McConaughey, it's like in the past, he's like a little bit more clean cut and put together. And then in the future, it's like, he's got like a mustache like this and like a ratty, like ponytail. And, and Rob was like, he's like, you know, it's not fair to take a, a like an attractive guy and like, like it, Hollywood, he's like, Hollywood always does this thing where they take like a, a really like attractive actor and then they like try to make them look dirty, but it's like, they're not nearly as gross as real people who look like that because they're already hot. And I was like, oh, I think he looks hotter when he's like raggedy than he does when he is like clean cut. And he's like, I hate you so much. Rob hates my taste in men. He thinks that I find filthy men attractive, which is true. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really it. And then today I watched, um, this movie called Spoiler Alert and it's got the guy, is it Jim Parsons from The Big Bang Theory? So I thought, oh my God, this movie, it's like, it's not going to be sad, but of course it was sad because it's about a gay couple and Hollywood cannot just let me have happy LGBTQ media like they just won't allow it they're like every they, they Hollywood thinks every gay person is miserable that's, that's what they think they're like you all have terrible lives and you should feel bad about it like that's how I feel every time I watch gay media so I watched that movie before filming and then I cried so much that I had to sit on the couch with an ice pack on my face for like an hour before I filmed because my face got all puffy so um it's sad but it was honestly like seeing Jim Parsons in a role that isn't the Big Bang Theory was kind of nice. So I recommend it if you want to be sad, but it is sad. So anyways, I probably rambled way too much and I really want to go stitch on Meditation Garden. So I'm going to work on that and I will be back in a couple weeks to show you my progress. But until then, I hope you guys are all staying warm. It's freezing here where I live and it has been snowing nonstop. So stay safe out there and I'll see you guys later. Bye.